Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Oh, magandang araw o gabi. Nasaan man kayo? Dako sa mundo. And to our seminarians who are participating for the first time, who just arrived a week or two weeks ago, are here today. Welcome, dear uh, seminarians, to our uh, community once again. A famous theologian by the name of French theologian by the name Henri de Lubac or Henry, we call it in English, Henry de Lubac said, The Eucharist makes the church, and the church makes the Eucharist. But I'm more interested in this first part of his dictum theological dictum, the Eucharist makes the church. This expresses the intimate relationship between the Eucharist, a sacrament of unity, a celebration, and the church as the reality of the church. That the Eucharist is being a sacrament of unity that expresses the unity of Christ and His body, the Church. So, in its celebration, we call Mass, the celebration of the Eucharist helps in the building or in the making and in the construction of this Church of Christ. One of the most eloquent uh, foundation of this theology of the Eucharist being the foundation of the Church is what we have he list, uh, heard today in the first reading from the first uh, letter of Paul to the Corinthians. In the context of the debate of eating of meat offered to idols, Paul presents a splendid theology on the Eucharist centered on the unity which the body of Christ generates as the community of believers are baptized, participate in it. In other words, the church, the baptized, grow as church, as community, as communion, as it participates in the one bread of the Eucharist, which is the body of Christ. St. Augustine would say, would exclaim before the reality of the Eucharist that, O oh, mystery of unity, bond of perfect charity. So our communion with Christ must produce also a communion with our brothers and sisters. Otherwise, as it happened in Corinth, where the church was fragmented, divided into groups, and some of them became sects because of their division, is indeed a betrayal of that communion with the body of Christ. It is therefore indispensable to continually verify the effect of our Eucharistic participation in the celebration of the Eucharist on its fruitiness is my participation in the Eucharistic celebration becomes the force of my love, of my charity, of my fraternal concern. Otherwise, 
if these celebrations do not bear or does not have any bearing in our Christian life, then we might consider it almost like a magic only. As Paul would, uh, would admonish the same Christians of uh, Corinth in chapter 11 of this letter, where he condemned the social segregations which humiliate precisely the church and the body of Christ. And this is the truth and teaching proclaimed already in the early church now from its beginning as expressed in one of the early writings during that apostolic period called Didache, no? teachings attributed to the Twelve Apostles. And I think this is even uh, placed, uh, uh, musicalized rather, this text that is used for communion or presentation of gifts, which says, for example, like the broken bread, loaf of bread, was scattered over the hill as grains, and having been gathered together to become one, one bread, thus make, O Lord, your church scattered all over the world into one. In other words, the Eucharist, the Mass, we celebrate should not only be for me or about me or about my personal salvation, but the Eucharist, being a gathering of the people of God, should lead us to closer communion with Christ in the first place, with God, but necessarily leads us also communion with our brothers and sisters who are fellow members of Christ's body. As St. Augustine would say, we become what we eat. We partake of the Christ's body, and in doing so, we become more cohesive, true body, more church, through our participation in the Eucharist. As Delvac would say, the Eucharist makes the church. That's why we understand why we celebrate frequently the Eucharist, especially Sunday, to remind us of our vocation towards unity as body of Christ. Just as they say, a family that eats together stays together, same is true with the church. The church that celebrates together that meal of sacrifice of Christ, the Eucharist, grows in unity. Indeed, Eucharist makes, the Eucharist makes the church. I was just reading a, a comment of a priest sounding an alarm of the present situation of our, uh, of our worship today. Now, sabi niya, people are so accustomed to participating a virtual mass, online mass, so comfortable because they do not need to go to the church. No. While he acknowledges that uh, the word proclaimed wherever, whatever form it is, no, whether in the, through mass media, it is still the word, the force of the word is there that inspires, yes. But the, uh, what is lacking is precisely this communion, the sharing of the Eucharistic sacrifice. And that you cannot do in the online masses. So he was, the priest was saying, Sana, hindi masyadong masanay ang mga tao, mga Kristiyano, 
na akala nila ay yung pagsimba, pagsamba sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ng online celebrations ay sapat na. Yes, the word, the power of the word proclaim, enlightens and sustains us. But that is just one part of our worship as Christians. The second part, which is the Eucharist, the Eucharistic sacrifice being shared in communion is what is lacking. While uh, it is valid and uh, our concern and realistic thing to avoid gathering because of this the uh, danger of infection and we can worship in the intimacy of our homes yet we should always consider that that form of worship is not in its fullest expression the fullest expression of this is of course as we say it is a celebration in word and sacrament May we, as we move out from our fear, no, let not our comfort defeat our uh, need to participate in the sacramental celebration of the Eucharist. And may we come to grow in this intimacy with Christ in communion and also with our brothers and sisters, fellow members of the body of Christ. Amen.